Hi everyone, today we're going to be working on escape. I'm going to play through it once first um, with metronome on for a quarter note equals to 120. So have the score with you and follow along while I play. going to point out a few details that you should watch out for when you're practicing. Um, the first one is the staccato technique in the beginning. So when we do staccato, we usually do it where your bow balance the best. So you can find the balance by placing your bow on your index finger and see where it can balance itself the best. And about here, the lower half, lower third, is where we're gonna play our staccato. Um, you can have the best control when the bow can balance itself. So um, have contact point on your index finger and lift your arm every time you play it. Make a little bit kind of a U shape in this kind of stroke. Second thing is this D sharp, this pitch that appears a lot in this piece since it's in D major. So for example, measure number 14, you have a B going into a C sharp. So make sure that your second and third fingers are wide enough to make a whole step. So it sounds like B, C sharp. If you have a half step, it'll sound like but here we have the C sharp, so. Another place that you'll see a C sharp is um, measure 23. You have a D going to C sharp and then back to D. This is a tricky fingering because you're only using one for all the three notes. 
So C sharp here, it's only half step from D. Make sure it's narrow enough. C sharp. Back to D. So it sounds like... Now let's go a little bit back to measure 16, where we see um, eighth notes appear for the first time. Here, even though the eighth notes don't have dots on it, they are not staccato, but their strokes are very similar to um, quarter notes with dots on it. So from measure 15 to 16, the articulations are basically the same. So make sure your eighth notes are short enough even though they don't have dots on it. Going on in measure 29 to 33, you have the dolce mark. Um, in this section, the melody is very lyrical, so we have to play a legato. Means you have to connect the melody line with very smooth bow change. So use your arm and very long bows and also wrist, flexible wrist that can help with this kind of long uh, melody line. So let me do it slowly from measure 29 and make sure you feel the gravity in your um, elbow, in your arm, so it'll help with the sound, the tone of the lower strings. accents marked on the A's. That's um, how we use it to help with the syncopated feeling. So when you do the accents, make sure you have your index finger lean into the string, grip it before you play it. So it creates this kind of this kind of articulation, very clear bites. So from 36 time make sure you grip the string well from measure 43 on we have a little pizzicato section and for pizzicatos to be very clear and speaks very well we have to use all the quarter notes to prepare for your pizzicato so place your finger on the string first before you pizz it so a Back on the string, prepare for the C sharp and then pit. Of course, for the eighth notes, you don't have that much time to go back on the string. But for quarter notes, make sure you want, um, you place your finger back before you pit. From measure 49 to 52, the rhythm here is a little bit tricky. So I'm going to slow it down to quarter note equals to 80 and let's focus on the rhythm here. Four, three, two, one. So to practice for this rhythm, um, a little tip might help you. In four, measure 49, you have the eighth note rest, and that's just enough for you to place your finger back on the string and then play the A. So a close up you can see here um, from 49, four, three, two, one. Place. So the pickup A is place from measure 67 we have the melody it's the main motive of this whole piece so let's take a look at this i have a little bowing suggestion here so on measure 67 the third beat you have eighth note and then here i suggest coming in on a down bow 
And they just do a seconds. The whole point of this is to have the G on the G in measure 60A to be on a down bow. So we can sink into the G and create a suspended feeling. However, in measure 69, the third beat, after the eighth rest, I recommend coming in on an up bow. Repeat after that is the same. So the first time of of this pattern, we do down bow, and the second time we come in on an up bow. So this whole section from measures 67 to 74 is the melody. So make sure you play it confidently. You play it strong and nice. So I would say use. Um, Flatten your bow, so have all the hair make contact with the string. Even though you're playing eighth note, make sure you speak very well with all the hair on the string. On measure 82, you have a crescendo marked. We're going from a forte to fortissimo in measure 83. So plan your bow use. So you can increase the amount of bow you're using along with the crescendo. So measure 82. Increase the amount of bow so you can naturally create the crescendo. From measure 85 to the end, you see there are a lot of accents marked again because we're ending strong in this piece. So the accents are to be emphasized. So again, just a reminder, make sure you have a nice grip with your index finger and the string and bite your string very well before you play the accent. And for the last measure, make sure all the 16 notes are strong, but with the first one only that has an accent. So bite the string. That's it for this piece. I hope you have fun practicing it.